morning guys, lovely morning today. It's really, really bright today, as expected. When we looked at the weather last night, um, it was showing, it was gonna be pretty good. So I was quite excited to see what was going on on the, uh, on the solar panels. So let's have a look. I noticed that the lights on here, solid blue, which it says on here, blue LED, bulk charge. So let's have a look at the screen then. So we're getting 32 watts, um, which is not bad at all. Um, which equates to 2.6 amps at the battery. So that is pretty cool. So as you can see, it's quite a bit of sunshine coming through the, uh, through the window up there. So let's have a look at the next screen. It's just went up again there. And you can see, um, you know, your maximum power that, you know, has, has been yielded so far. So, you know, not, not that much, 20 watt hours. So yeah, 30 watt hours so far. Um, maximum power 37 watts it's going up as well that should continue to go up as well because it's only it's only like half 10 so it should get even better um, providing the cloud doesn't sort of cover up um, maximum voltage 12.63 minimum voltage 11.77 that was probably where it where it kind of ended up um, what's this here that's yesterday oh, I think it does it from right to left which is weird anyway this has changed to 30 watt hours up here, so that's your maximum so far. Maximum 40 watts, so it looks like it's proper kicking now. 40 watts, look at that. 3.1 amps. Proper geek stuff going on here. It's, it's continuing to rise as well. Well, right, it would be interesting to see anyway. It's going up even more, 42, 3.3 amps now going in. That's the panel voltage as well. This controller handles up to 100 volts, so potentially you might be able to put two in series. I was thinking if I've got another panel um, on here, whether to wire it in parallel or whether to wire it in series, I'm not really sure how it works. I need to look into that. Putting them in parallel, obviously then, then that's gonna be 90 watts. But then in the summer, it's gonna be bonkers, isn't it? That's the, that's the thing. Um, and right now, I mean, it'd be doing, even now, at 10 o'clock in the winter, it's doing three and a half amps. So if you had two panels, it's gonna be like seven amps, which is, going to charge the battery pretty quick but also that means you know we, we could potentially have loads of stuff on in here um, and yeah not worry about it too much well I've got my my battery heater on at the minute just to try and take the edge off a bit it's pretty chilly in here um, I think it was like zero degrees today so we need to start looking at this battery um, I've got some caps on tape coming to tape up the edge of this caps on tape is this heat proof um, insulating tape which goes, you know, you can put over the top of contacts and things like that. It's really good. It's the standard thing that, that's used in batteries to try and, you know, make sure that, um, you know, nothing gets affected by heat. And it, it kind of just prevents anything, anything bad happening with these connections on the side because they're exposed. So I need to work out um, what I'm going to do with this. I need to first make some series connections on here. The balancing board should turn up today. And then I can rig that onto here. Um, and then we, we should be able to start, you know, charging and, and testing out some stuff. Guys, we're up to 59 watts, 4.5 amps going in. So here's the story so far with the batteries. I've basically, I've just stuck this tape around here to, to secure them. But I've done um, the series connections between the two banks I've got here um, on both sides. And then I've started to, here's the series link wire here. I've actually used like copper cable, which is, huge but um i've had to strip it out because i can't i just can't solder that size of cable onto here it's just not feasible it's going to heat this up too much and risk you know damaging this top this cell or, or like the insulation between it so i've i've kind of done the same here as well i've just stripped a bit of cable back pulled some of the copper off and then just soldered it onto there and i think that's that's okay but my my iron seems to be like struggling a little bit it is quite a powerful one but it's starting to struggle a little bit um so what i need to do next is do the positive end you know to this bank and then i've decided if i put them in side by side here uh then we should be able to just link these two up hopefully they'll have, have enough space for all the other bits and pieces but then i just need to sort out the fuse on the positive end and the shunt for the negative end and then uh yeah it's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of work really all right guys it's a bit later now it is two o'clock so just had some lunch and um come back in here and um yeah let's see see how the uh how the charging system's going so currently we're 23 watts so it's gone down a bit since earlier 
Um, but let's scroll to the next page and just see what the what the maximum um, we've we've hit. So maximum was somewhere around um, where we were before, so 64 watts. But so far today, we've got 180 watt hours. So that isn't bad at all. Right, so I'm going to continue looking at this then. Just need to do the positive wire on this and, and start wiring it up. The other bits haven't turned up yet, so hopefully they will. So I've actually put a balancing lead on here just to um, just to check. I want to keep a balancing lead on it on the battery anyway, um, so that I can just plug in one of these things. But as you can see, all four cells, bang on the nail, 3.58. You've got to watch these um, little balancing um, gizmos. This was from uh, Hobby King, I think, because what happens is it actually uses, I think, like the first cell, the first two cells, um, to power this device. So if you leave this plugged in all the time, you're going to end up with a problem because it will start discharging the pack. And then if you try and balance, then it will pull the other cells down to those voltages. So, so these things are all right for checking, but you don't really want to leave them plugged in all the time. Right, time to cut a hole for the uh, for the Victron battery meter. Right, nice neat hole. Right, guys, BMS has turned up. Um, also, some other bits and pieces, some caps on tape, other bits and bobs. So, I've just wired the uh, BMS. I'm keeping this on as well. I'm going to do some tests with the BMS probably just to see, you know, what what actually happens if it's working okay. But um, yeah, there you go. So I just need to, um, I'm going to wrap this lot up now and um, insulate all this up and move metal objects away. You know, with um, like caps on tape around the edge, things like that. The box is looking good now. So there you go. Right guys, so about half a roll of tape later, we're there. So caps on insulation around the sides, just nicely cover everything up. Um, and then like another, Layer of the fiberglass weave tape over the top of that, just to um, just to keep it nice and strong. All the balance of wires I've kind of secured in as well, just to make sure they're not gonna not gonna go anywhere or work loose on any of these connections. Yeah, so there you go. All I've got to do now is um, wire up. This is the shunt for the um, for the for the display. So that's got to go in there. I've got to actually do the rest of the wiring for the BMS actually. So it's only the negative charge and negative discharge um, leads. So I'm going to split them off, um, and then, yeah, that this just stays as it is. Everything just gets bolted to the end of that. So I need to put the BMS on the end of here first. I'm going to go battery, BMS, then the shunt. Uh, is, that the way to, is that the right way to do it? Let me think. Because then if the BMS cuts the battery off, the display will go off, which is kind of what you want. Because then you'll be able to see, you know, you definitely see there's a problem with that with the battery if the BMS is, is cut. Also, yeah, if the, that's the right way to do it, because also the display is going to draw some power. So if something, if everything goes wrong, the BMS will shut off the power supplied to the um, to the display. So then you won't, you know, you won't risk running the batteries right down. Well, I think this display probably only powers up when it's got um, a decent voltage anyway. But we don't want really to go lower than 12 volts on this three three volts a cell. Yeah, it's better to have the BMS first and then go in after that. BMS is on. So these are the main wires for the battery and the load. Um, I need to do the charge. Ooh, stuck a bit of caps on over there. Need to stick on the wire for the charge, actually. You forgot about that. Then obviously you just plug the balancing lead in there as well. Bang. All right, guys, a bit later now. Uh, and we've done a lot more other than um, just kind of put stuff into the box and get ready for tomorrow's final um, wiring up and then I'll I'll probably do I was thinking I might do a test actually um, to test the BMS is working um, just basically discharge the pack down um, on this charger um, with, a, with, a, with the balancing lead connected um, and actually I might not be able to do that because it'll probably this will probably cut off before the BMS you know discharge it down maybe connect it to one of those heaters or something and then um, Basically, yeah, I mean, they're good for, for that, actually. They're good for, for kind of a load, you know, putting a load on something. Um, yeah, and then just see if the BMS cuts out when it's supposed to. You know, that's that's what I'm going to do. The only thing I'm thinking now, um, which is a bit annoying, is that this meter, or this meter on the other side of here, this meter here, it actually is, is really cool because it reads the um, current going out of the battery and the current coming in, into the battery, and it uses that to adjust state of charge. 
Now the problem is, so it's, it's, a, it's like a two-way shunt, it's, it's really good. But the problem is, I can't do that if I'm going to go through the, um, the BMS charge port, which is kind of annoying because you've got two separate outputs, one's for discharging and one's for charging. So, you know, if you want the BMS to cut out the charge if things get out of control, which you kind of do really, um, then yeah, you've got a bit of a problem there. The only thing I could do is rather than connect my charger to here, I could connect it to, to there, set the voltage on the charger so that it doesn't go higher than about 12 volts, and then hope that the BMS is gonna, you know, start doing some, some balancing if things get wildly out of control. These BMSs don't balance at a very high current. So if you've got, you know, four or five amps going in, this isn't gonna do diddly squat. The only way it will is if the charger stops and then you know a cell one cell is higher so then it will start balancing down that's i think that's how this works this balancer but, but yeah we need to do some testing to, to work it out but other than that we're almost there almost got everything in the box um i think i'm going to mount this shunt oh, be careful to get all these wires in, in the wrong places that wouldn't be good i think i'm going to mount this shunt over here um, because then the negative lead is actually right next to this output here and I think that's where I'm going to put the inverter leads. Is that big enough? It might not even be big enough. I'll probably probably punch that out a bit more. So the inverter leads will come in there. One obviously negative goes there, and then the positive goes to the to the fuse. So yeah, guys, I think that would be good. Um, so that's it for today. Um, in total today, the um, the solar system brought in 190 watt hours. So like fifth of a kilowatt hour. So you know, not not massive, but it's only one panel. And also I'm not in here 100% of the time with everything on. So, you know, it's gonna probably even out. So I may just get another panel and then try two and then just kind of work up from there. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this um, part three and um, yeah, back again for part four tomorrow. <laughs>